Okay, so we're going to take a look at the first of our dedicated node videos today, which will be the unified model loader. We're going to step through every field, every input, every output, and see exactly what each one does. That way you have a comprehensive reference that you can come back to if you need to refresh your memory on how this works exactly. So let's jump into our comfy and take a look. Of course, our unified model loader is all the way over here on the left in our startup group which only has this one node because that's all we need. I think the easiest way to go about this is to bring out all of the nodes that are encompassed in our unified model loader so we can take a look at each field on the node and see how it corresponds to other nodes that we are already familiar with. So first up we have these top three fields here for our NF4 model, our stable diffusion model, and then our unit model. And and if you click on these fields, you will see that they are exactly the same drop down menus as are listed in these nodes. So, for example, the NF4 is looking into your checkpoints folder, and so you'll see the models that you have in your checkpoints folder there. The load checkpoint node also looks into that same folder, so you're going to see that same exact list. And if you look at these two fields here, of course, that is going to be the same list in each of these fields. So, they are are looking into the same folder but the NF4 checkpoint loader and the standard load checkpoint node operate in different ways so you do want to make sure you use your NF4 model with this field even though you can select it in this field it is not going to work so you want to make sure you select your NF4 in the field that says NF4 model and then for your stable diffusion models SDXL, SDXL Turbo, Dream Shaper, any of those you want to select with the SD model field. And of course, the UNET model is the same as what you would see on the load diffusion model node. It is checking your UNET folder for models that are stored in there. So you would want to load your flux dev, for example, with that UNET model field right there, which is the same as this load diffusion model. And similarly, on this load diffusion model node, we have this weight D type here, which has some selections for you to choose for your weight types. And that is exactly what what this field corresponds to. So you're going to see these same options in this weight D type field that you would see in the weight D type field on your load diffusion model node. So those are all very straightforward. They're just loading up your model. And then below these fields, we have this field that says model type. And that's where you're just going to select which one of these three you want to use. So if you are using this NF4 model here, you would of course select NF4. If you want to use one of your stable diffusion models, you would select SD. And then if you're using the UNET model, you would just select UNET. So pretty straightforward. And this is just going to allow the node to load up only the model that you want. So if you're using NF4, you'll have these other ones selected in these fields, but those models will not actually get loaded. Only the one you select in this model type field will actually get loaded, which of course is just to make sure we don't clog up your VRAM. Moving on to the next three fields, so we have clip one, clip two, and clip type. And those are going to correspond exactly to the fields that you would see here on the dual clip loader. These are called clip name one, clip name two, and type. I changed the names a little bit, but they are the exact same fields that you would see. So clip one, of course, corresponds to clip name one, and so on. And if you click on the fields, you are going to see the same drop down menu that you would see in the dual clip loader fields as well. So it's exactly the same and the same for the type down here. Your type that you would select is exactly the same as what you would select in there. That is your clip type. And then for the VAE name, of course, if you click on this, that is going to give you the same drop down menu that you would see in your load VAE node. So all of the same VAE models that you have right there will show up in this field. And just like your clip, of course, you'll want to select the one that corresponds to the model that you're using. So for example, if you're using the NF4 model, you could use the AE.safe tensors, or if you're, say, using some stable diffusion model, like let's say SDXL Turbo, then you might want to select on your clip type SDXL and then on your VAE a SDXL VAE. So that way you're loading the appropriate clip and VAE for the model you have selected. And finally, we just have a seed field down here at the bottom. This works in exactly 
exactly the same way as any other seed field you would see on any other node. And the reason I have it here is because it seems like a logical place to put a seed. If we can use an output that goes to a use anywhere node, then we can broadcast that seed to all of the nodes in our workflow. And that way we have a global seed that we only have to set once instead of having to set individual seed values on all of our nodes. For the language model seed, we can pick that up right there. And then over on our sampler, of course, we have a seed right there as well. So we can pick that up. Now, in the case of the LLM prompt and the sampler, you'll notice that there's also a field here called seed string list. And for this, you can actually enter a comma separated list of seeds like so. If you wanted to test out multiple seeds, and if you do that, then the input seed that you're getting from the unified model loader will be ignored or wherever you get a seed from if you get it from somewhere else other than the unified model loader this seed input will be ignored if you have something in this seed string list field so if you want to make sure you're using your global seed from the unified model loader make sure you don't have anything in this field or else it will ignore that seed and go with whatever is listed right there and the same thing over on the sampler you have this seed string list at the bottom and that works in exactly the same way if you put some seeds down in here the input seed will be ignored and whatever is in this field will be used so again if you want to make sure you're using your global seed for all of your nodes if you're using the flow state llm prompt and the flow state unified sampler just make sure your seed string list fields on both of those are empty so that you can use your global seed and then of course if you wanted to try multiple seeds for your language model or multiple seeds for your sampler you could just put in a comma separated list in that seed string list field and then the global seed will be ignored and you could try a few different variations of other seeds the unified model loader is a very straightforward node but again there are a lot of fields on there and i just wanted you guys to have a dedicated reference that you could come back to anytime you need to refresh your memory on exactly what any of those fields do especially for those of you who are just starting out with comfy i could see how that would be a little bit confusing so now you have a dedicated video to let you know exactly what each of these fields does as far as future updates to the unified model loader i have had some people in the comments asking me about support for ggUF models for example the flux ggUF model and currently just like these nodes over here the only support we have is for loading safe tensor files and checkpoint files but i do think having ggUF support for your model loading is a good idea so coming very soon right up underneath these top three fields there will be another field added that will say ggUF model so if you are using flux or some other type of ggUF model you will have support for that coming very soon probably within the next three to five days or so at the most anyways that's going to do it for this video if you guys have not checked out the live streams yet i would highly suggest jumping in there if you're able it's not a rigid schedule but i do stream most days around 6 or 7 p.m eastern time and i'm also looking at breaking up the streams i know we have some viewers from the uk and some viewers from australia and other parts of the world so i am going to break up the stream into multiple parts to make it more convenient for you guys to join the next dedicated node video will be on our llm prompt and prompt output nodes which will be coming tomorrow so be on the lookout for that that one's going to be just a little longer because there are more features to cover in those nodes but i'm going to break it down for you so you know exactly how everything works with those of course like and subscribe if you are not already and share the video with anyone you know who might find it useful hope to see you guys over on the live stream this evening and if not i will catch you on the next video until then take care <laughs>